What's up, chat? What's up to my YouTube viewership? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 15. My team down at Nerd Street is still on vacation, man. They went from Denver, then they went to Atlanta. Uh, no, they were in Kentucky, then they went to Atlanta. So all my guys are moving around. Plus, it's supposed to be real snowy and rainy in Philadelphia. It's nice. So if you're in Pennsylvania, if in the East Coast or in the Midwest, it's supposed to be super cold. So make sure, man, y'all stay in house, stay warm, all that. Y'all don't need to travel or anything like that, man. If you're enjoying the podcast, I've gotten a lot of great reviews about what I do for this podcast. So if you are, please hit the like button and please comment on what segments you would like to see incorporated in the next couple weeks. But this is a big week in Madden. This is a huge week in Madden. This is actually the Madden Club Championship. We are down to the 32. Last week, we uh, introduced the bracket challenge. I've gotten over 100 brackets filled in and go ahead and compete to try to win the, the amount of prizes that I'm giving away. I might have to do the scoring a little bit differently. I said I was going to give one point for every correct win. And that team, somebody could get a good first round, not even have a right winner, and not have a lot of the deep rounds. I think I'm going to go one, one point for the first round, two points for the second round, and, and two points from the second round on. And obviously, if you get the right winner, that's a, that's a whole at least 10 points for the right winner. But we'll figure it out. And like I said, I'll go over the brackets, all these brackets I have filled out. So far, it feels like Journey is a big favorite for everybody, man. He's probably the number one person that people have picked to win. Also, a lot of Kivs, obviously, he's been in there. Kiv and Journey, probably the, the, the two favorites right now. I see from the public, from the feedback you guys have given me, if you haven't checked out the bracket and filled out a bracket, this podcast is actually Tuesday night. The tournament starts tomorrow. So if you're listening on Twitch, obviously you can still get your brackets in. Check out the Twitter, the bracket challenge. It's still live. But I will probably cut it off right before the first game tomorrow, man. Obviously not going to get any brackets coming in late or coming in early from the, uh, whatchamacallit, coming in once the, once the tournament starts. So we're really excited about this, man. We're going to go over my bracket, but something that did happen in this past week Obviously, we knew that AKG had lost the um, Jets Club Series. We knew that happened. Uh, We knew he lost the ice. And we were finally able to watch it, and it was a game that we could really talk about. I didn't think it was nothing crazy that either of them did wrong, but just a couple things that I want to show you guys. And we'll talk about that game, and we'll go over it, man. I hope you guys really, I mean, really watched it. And uh, it's definitely something I want to look into. Now, AKG, uh, is AKG live in Living Color? He's not in here. Just go into one of the things. I'll drag you in. <clears throat> but we'll bring up this game with AKG, man, because it's a lot It's a lot of things that uh, he did. That I mean, they weren't questionable decisions. All right, here we go. Gang, gang. What's going on, What's Chris? the word, man? How you making out? Chilling, man. Doing good. Yeah. Ryan in DC. Ryan in DC, as you should be after losing this game, man. I mean, how disappointed were you with the outcome of this football game? Very. Very. I mean, very. is it possible that you could bring this this YouTube video up on and we could watch this together? Ah, uh, yeah. 100%. Okay, bring that up. I'm right in the beginning. All right, give me yeah, a second. Take your time, time. man, because. I felt like you were, you were prepared for this. I felt like you you had a good team. I feel like obviously you had a good scheme. I love the offense that you run. I feel like it's very effective, and uh, I, I expect you to come out of the Jets Club Series division, man. All uh, right, I'm right where to kick off. Yeah. All right, I'm where am I at? Uh, what are you using? Compton's uh, YouTube. Yep, Compton YouTube. Yeah, I'm yeah. at 12 seconds. All right, cool. Let me skip. All yeah, right, all right. So he about to snap the ball. Now you in the nickel normal. Now, talk about why you like the nickel normal. I feel like it just – I only. I mean, I'm only in it because of a bunch. I feel like it just gives a bunch a lot of trouble, the way you just baseline press yeah. and take it away, you know, a lot of stuff. Sheds is really good, if, you know, even if you don't send the nickel back. So, that's why I like okay. it. Okay. See, I think, the, I think the sheds are terrible in this defense. And, and I'll get to that when you're playing offense because uh, you see Victor. But I feel like the sheds are bad. Ever since the nickel G, nickel G and nickel normal were crazy, and then they patched – those formations specifically, and I think the Sheds got better in every other formation other than that one. But uh, the That's one true. thing about nickel normal, just like every good defense, man, it can definitely drop into a lot of coverage, but at the same time with the same look, you can get instant pressure on the quarterback, and that's always something that's important when running a defense because you want to be able to get you know give the opponent multiple looks, and that's what nickel normal does. I agree with that. 
He was sending three, so I don't know. Yeah, he was sending three most of the game until late in the game where he felt like he had he had his foot, his foot on your neck. But we'll get to that late or late in the game. But early, obviously, you're allowing this man to throw his flat passes. And here, you gotta get to that. But who was our who was our user right there? Oh, you got Reed. He's pretty uh, fast. Justin Reed, uh, playoffs ninety three. Oh yeah, well, shoot, that was close. And a lot of trouble I've had doing the because I promise you guys I was the first person ever to run the comeback and the, as a car flat beater. But one problem that I have is that sometimes the hard flat comes back and hits sticks and makes him drop that. But he held on to that, and as you see, an overthrow on the next pass. Now the overthrows were probably the biggest story of this game. And as you see, I so ice getting one right there an overthrow on a mesh post, I believe, or I don't know what it is, some post route. I don't know these kids with their route chems and all these other things. That was um yeah, that was mesh post. But the thing is he had high ball down. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. You know, a high ball with Vic is like fifty fifty almost, especially in the end yeah. zone. It's definitely gonna be something that you gotta live with with Vic. And uh, like I said, I think after watching this game, I think it pretty much it determined a lot of this game, the high balls, man. That's true. But, but like you said, you've pretty much given up the flat almost every play, which is good. I mean, and once again, just giving up the flat. And you're making him take it, and he's doing a good. He has five completions for 32 yards, which is six yeah, yards. That, that's, not to cut you up, but that really was my game plan, you know, just give him the flats. I don't see you. I do it for the three quarters. And, and right here. Because I got Sean Taylor. Yeah, oh, yeah, for and, sure. And Derwin. Um, for, for yep. sure. Now, I know you and me, if my opponent on his first drive kicked the field goal on fourth and inches, I felt very oh, happy. I yes, I want. Yes, yeah, I, I, want. I feel like opinion, he didn't even think about it. He just said, "I'm kicking right away." So I, 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 I would feel happy about that. Especially third and inches. Yeah, dude. for sure. Like, I mean, obviously it's always good to put points up, but I'm not mad at the field goal decision there. But I know from a defensive player, I would be very relieved that he went and kicked it that fast on a fourth and inches. But you know, yeah. especially if you can run the way he's been running, doing the ball in the flats and everything, it's really fairly easy to pick that up on that position of the field. But you know, but what's here's it's your first drive. You're starting at the ten yard line because you don't want to catch a kick. Yeah, I, I, that was my mistake. User mistake. I clicked on Dion by mistake. Usually, I like computer catch that, and you know they do a good job. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, we gonna talk about your little running situation. I, I mean, boy, oh boy. Yeah. Best formation in the game in watch real. No, I'm just yeah. Kidding. That's all. It is, but there's a lot of things that I mean. Obviously, I know exactly what you want to, what you're looking for every time, and I, yeah. I know what he's doing on defense. And what he's doing on defense is probably the best defense for this for this this formation because one, you have Todd Gurley every single play, but what he's doing is he has a yellow zone, a vert hook over here, and the vert hook is pressing Moss. And it's making it look like Todd Gurley's covered. So you never throw the ball to Todd Gurley really ever. And even if he is open, I mean, it's hard to take that and run into night train every time. Yeah, exactly. And there we go. We just throw the ball to a, to a post route. Now, use that play pretty well with the out route and that post route. Yeah. But the one thing I like to do with this formation is put it on the wide side of the field when somebody's just running cover too. And you do that a couple of times, and it, it was probably your most effective plays of the game. Yeah, I started catching on and I flipped it. But early on, I always want to stack the sideline. But like you said, the hook curl would, you know, press and uh, he would play that whip route really well, stay on it long enough. Yeah. Currently dump it down. And here we have our first desync of the game. Talk about what a desync does to your momentum, to your gameplay, and what you had to sit through for this desync. It literally kills it. Knowing I had to stop on his first drive to get three, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, you know, relaxed, really relaxed about the drive down. And it's just these things, and now I'm just, like, frustrated. All right. But, you know, we got to redo the situation. So I started listening to my music, got right back into the group. All right, what music are we listening to? Are we 21 Savage? Is that the, the music of choice? 21 Savage, Sosa, uh, McMill, oh, all the young. All the young. All right, well, I fast-forwarded <laughs> to 543, where you about to snap the ball again. Uh, all right. Let me know when you're there. I'm all there. Right, I'm hitting play. All right, so you got this little running formation. Which, I mean, gives a lot of trouble to nickel normal because I seen VY play against Drini online. Gives all the formation a lot of trouble actually. All the like nickel back formation. So yeah, I mean, right anytime there. you can, anytime you can hit a run <laughs> for big yards, it's relaxing. It's relieving because you don't have to pass. That's why I say the run is just. I mean, like you can run that same run ten times and and, and six times will blow it for no yards or, or four times you'll get four yards or one time you'll go to a touchdown and that's what I mean. It's like there's nothing really you're doing to make that run that much better. It's pretty much just I hope it works really. Yeah, it's really inconsistent. Yeah, and you see now this 
this was a mistake that I mean I've made and I've learned why this happens and I want to I want to know if you know why that happened. Pause the video. Uh, to be honest, I do not know why it happened. All right, let me but... show you. Go back to the beginning of play if you can. And I will show you why this happened and why this defense right. gives trouble to this formation. Because what he has out here, or I have a soft squats or whatever he has on his, his flat zones. Now, you'll see that what happened, you see Tyreek Hill is on the post route. And you know, we all know this post route doesn't really get covered by anything once it gets across the field. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah. what will happen is Tyreek Hill will get bumped. And when Tyreek Hill gets bumped, it changes the trajectory of his route. Instead of running the post at 12 route, twelve yards, he'll probably run it around 8. And what that causes, it kind of messes up the whole play And that, you know, now the yellow zones will cover it, the, the flat zones will cover it. And that's why it looked like it was covered when you went to throw it and you didn't throw it because obviously that's what you're looking for when you run this play every time. And you'll see yeah. he gets bumped. Yep, he gets bumped, run his, his route at 7 yards instead of 12. And honestly, I, I, I'm not mad at what you do there. I, I probably, me, myself, when there's, every time they're standing on the sideline, I try to throw the ball high, but, but you just, it was just bad timing, him come running back right when you do the ball, so. Yeah, Skimble told me the same thing. He's like, that's really, like, if you high, it's a 50-50. If you high ball it, I'll probably get that, but, you know, because I just pass, low, I mean, uh, pass like that down, definitely while the corner jump. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, I mean, yeah, so I, I just got to add, I'm at the next play. First and ten, he bought a snap. Yeah. So now you got your stop, and and I mean I'm I'm like a, a I don't know if I'm superstitious, but I feel like when you get a reset, the game you lose the momentum. You know what I'm saying like I feel like your defensive players had momentum because they got a stop. I don't know. I mean I don't know if it's just the way I feel or way the game works. No, yeah, like I'm I'm pissed that we restarted the game because my my little computer players don't really know that we got to stop, even though we did. Yeah, exactly, and that actually affects the game. I, I don't care what anyone tells me. That's superstitious. Yeah, true. for sure. But AI plays into it. 100%. Yeah, for sure. But there goes Mesh Post again. Randy Moss is still high ball. Randy Moss is, is the best player in the game, and uh, yeah. he, he continues to show that over and over in the game. So, like I said, even though you can hold him to what you call it, hold him three here, you're still in good face at good place. And I believe they actually even said that on the broadcast. I think it was Grocery that did this game. It's just hold him to three, you'll be fine. And uh, that's the goal, obviously. And that's the hardest spot spot to uh, stop. And honestly, if I'm playing him, I'm just not letting Moss get the ball. Because really, what, what are you thinking on defense down here inside the 20-yard line? Uh, Still giving him the flats, to be honest. I just got to use it our entire middle. But right there, that was a user mistake. Yeah, for sure. I fell down to the drag, yeah. For sure. No, oh, no. You, you still, uh, whatchamacallit, you still, you ahead of me. But one thing that I do a lot down here is that I'll take the, take these safeties out of deep uh, deep halves because they spread so crazy. Pause. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's Moss. But you, like I said, you got the overthrow. I don't know if it's a bad time. I don't know what happened there. But like I said, you got the overthrow, and what happened? And obviously, there's an interception. So he threw a high ball earlier, caught it, had two overthrows, and that one was an interception on a pl on a play mm -hmm. that honestly it should have been ten nothing on that play because I mean it's Randy his, Moss. His mistake is uh, oh yeah I I, uh, I agree with that should have been ten nothing. He he keeps high ball that before they oh, cut. Oh yeah, so, like, like bad timing with his throws. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, really bad timing. Yeah, second time now, and I didn't mean to take that out. Like you know how the game is definitely. Oh yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But... yeah, like I said, this the cover two gives a lot of trouble to the high low whether it be. Now, see, now, one thing that pissed me off about this game, what you did, you really taking your time, not only here, but throughout the whole game, say, you, I'm going to go ahead and take it to the, take it to the uh, second quarter, blah, whatever it may be. You were real patient and real calm. And early in the game, I felt like you, you just had control of the game, especially after he threw the pick. You see his, his head is in his hands. He's frustrated. He should at least have 6 nothing. so he, he's disappointed in, in the opportunities he had and the opportunities that he has squandered. And I feel like you really calm right now. Yeah. Uh, Going to the game, I played goals, Joe, like every single West Coast bunch runner. So, you know, I was literally like confident as hell getting stopped. So I definitely felt comfortable. And offensively, I knew if I took my dumb downs and whatnot, I'll, I'll be good. Get some yeah, you points. haven't taken your really dumb down at all this game because. Yeah, he took yeah, it away. Oh, also, another thing. Yeah. Another thing, while we were practicing the area, you know how they let us warm up. My dude pulls out his cell phone <laughs> with game playing, like game play, me against Joe. So, you know, he was really well prepared. He knew exactly what to do against me. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, and for I, sure. I, I, I've said so that the cover two is, is tough to play with that trips to the short side because, honestly, 
when I started running trips to the short side, it was because a bunch last year to the short side against cover three, it was a lot uh, easier to beat cover three with that. And uh, oh shit, mm-hmm. what I do? All right, we're back. So it was definitely a. Uh, well, now you go to bunch. Oh, and we get another desync. Jesus. All right, let me fast forward to the desync. Now I think your momentum's kind of even. But now I'm back. I'm back yeah, out of the fine. desync, and you about to snap the ball. Let me know when you're there. Where are you at right now? Uh, 116, one se- or 11, 11, 18. All right, cool. That should be the last. Fast forward. Yep. All right. I'm going right. to play. All right. But now I feel like if you have it to the wide side, it puts so much more stress on him because because of four verticals. Really, that's the, the uh, cover two can't really be ran against that. You know, he has to make so many adjustments. That makes it yeah. the other things to work. And anytime you can bust that run, which I think is pretty bad, but anytime you can bust it for a couple yards, that's a big thing. And what Marcus Allen is this we are using? Uh, 57 cab, 93 oh, speed. Man. Okay, that's a couple That's a couple dollars on the running back. Mm-hmm. I see you got the Dion man out there. And uh, he's yeah. just so good on cap that he's kind of worth it, really. 100%. But, uh, Catching stats really don't matter that much with route running, so oh, speed oh, kills. Yeah, sure. Not yet. Saw the captain knowing like he's only sending three. You know what? Throwing the run here and there. Oh yeah. If I bust one. Oh, yeah. For sure. And I felt like he sent. Like I said, he sent three the whole game. And you had all day, most every play. But it's it's hard to find. Like you're trying to pick, do the high low shit, in between uh, a lot of different. There's so many zones out there, really. And what mm-hmm. a lot of people do is they'll shade down and then they'll recloud the outside guy. So there's yellow zone. If you see his yellow zone, we'll press and cover Gurley pretty much all the way till he gets to the numbers. But then his cloud flat is mm-hmm. also back 15 yards. So it makes it hard to, uh, to really yeah. to make that read. It's really a tough read. And even if you make it right, Gurley's not going to get that many yards. <clears throat> it's true. Now in this play, I can't lie, this play, you were the first one that I said really throw this wheel route. And I've tried to run it a lot, but this is – once you started running this play, this play is the, the number one play that really killed him. It really changed changed the game once yeah. you started going to this you a lot have, more. You should have seen his face. He's just like, he just don't know what the hell happened to his own. I knew obviously what would happen to his own. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I started yeah. doing it. And the thing is, it works only to the short side. So hence why I kept running this you know thing. Mm-hmm. Well, the set to the short side most of the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if I could sure. just tell if you can cover two, throw that in there. Yeah, and then what happens is yeah, because of the shade down and recloud his outside corners, that curl route's never gonna be open with that vert hook sitting there. And then when you throw the flat, like you said, you only got he only got three yards. So yep. but you have to take it. And we're gonna in half here. You get the ball, it's gonna be tough to take this whole half. You'd have to or it, you'd have to get another first down. And uh, obviously that's what you wanna do is take all these time right here. I'm get ball at half and then you know. Yeah. Ball out. Now, I, I don't know if this is now when you go to the play. I, I would have ran about 700 times. It is. Yes. Verticals. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, yes. You know that. <laughs> I if I saw this much cover two, I, one thing I learned in Madden is that, you know, when people show you this much cover two, then <laughs> you got to run verticals. It really, And when you look back <laughs> on a game, when you play against cover two, you say to myself, man, I should have ran four verticals a lot more, you know, because it really is. There's no way to cover that unless you change your deep blues. Especially with Moss in the middle, and once they made that Moss that has 98 speed, it's just it was a no-brainer to put him right there in the slot. Yeah, especially with the high ball from Saints oh, Island. For Everything. sure. The height. For sure, and then I mean, after that, I mean that's like bang. When you give up a touchdown like that, you're sick as often as any player. You're sick, and then you know, like I'm saying, it feels good to get an easy touchdown like that, and that's what four verticals can do. And it's, verticals really the best play in watcher you do. It is, absolutely, but uh. Jeez, and there you go with man, your boy uh, Byron Jones. That's that's what I'm yeah. about. Yeah, you was on Byron Jones when the car came out and said he's the best yellow zone player in the world. He was playing, man. He was balling out for me. And yeah, so right now I just feel like you can't give up any uh, points. I see you. That's a deep quarter out there, eh? A hundred percent. So get away. And then uh, you're trying to allow, allow Lattimore. Is Lattimore gonna get bombed? How fast is he? Nah, he's 97 oh, speed, so 96. You got two guys that's pretty much not going to get bombed, and then you're going to put your quarters out here to try to cover the corner route as best they can. Yeah. Now, this is where me, myself, I like a little bit, but then you give a first down on the drag, which is just, a, honestly, it was just a perfect animation, both after the catch and 
during the tackle, really. But uh, yeah, that was a bad year. Oh, yeah. But uh, I feel like if you had Patrick Peterson and Jalen Ramsey out there on on the corner <laughs> instead of these big goon hitters, that oh, they would play better zones. But Pat P and Jalen Ramsey are getting trucked every play by Frank Wagner. I, I, I haven't seen it. I, I, I mean, most of the time, what happens is that. Franco Harris, you can get to him before he spins. Trust. Yeah, like especially if there's a fast enough player. But I mean, you're right. Especially if we're gonna play cover two, I think. But like I said, if you want, if you want to run a corner, I would want a corner there more than a. And this was a wild play by him. And there's Derwin James Moss and the hell out of Ricky Williams. <clears throat> really, just a just for a kid that kind of played pretty good all game. Honestly, that was just a bad mistake. I want to say he hit the wrong button and tried, but you don't hit the wrong button when you're throwing to the running back. So, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, he got way too cute right there. He tried to think, oh, my Will Routes eventually going to run over top of that zone. And that's dumb. He he knows that's never going to work. Even when they run verticals against cover two, like three-man route streaking RB from a bunch or whatever. Oh, yeah. That Will Routes would never get behind clouds. It just bumped him down the sideline. Oh, yeah, that's a tough throw for sure, especially rolling out all the way the other way. Anyway, yeah, exactly. That play hurt because now you got a chance to go up 10 to, 10 to uh, 3. That's all I really want to do. Here, I want to go to halftime. If I can be up seven points, that would be fabulous. And we see the wheel route. He rage hits sticks, and you spin, and Randy Moss scores a touchdown. So, boom. Now I feel like you in the hole, kid. Like, this is it's rough for you right now. This is where I actually messed up, like, badly. You know, I've never been. Last year, <clears throat> it was, like, close game or whatever. So, I couldn't really be like, oh, shit, you know what? I might actually win this game, so. And this game right here is in my head like, oh, I actually might be winning this. You know, like I'm in a really good situation. And I start forgetting like the little stuff, play by play, you know, stuff like that. So me and Skimble spoke about this and he told me his first time he did the same kind of thing. Started playing stupid because he had the lead. So you started smelling your own shit yeah. like I already won the game type yep. shit. And it fucked me up a little bit. Just a little right. bit. Well, I, listen, I noticed the way you changed playing a little bit, especially in the fourth quarter, not necessarily the third quarter. Yeah, that, that's a that's just a big play, and I mean there, that's when you want your hitters at safety because Deion's somebody got to hit him there. But they touched Randy Moss. Now he's pretty much in field goal range. It's going to be tough to keep him out of field goal range. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so this is tough because if you play super aggressive, one little dot to get the uh, first down. And the quarter's doing a pretty good job on that there corner around. I mean. If, yeah, I wanted him to throw every single play. Yeah, well, like I said, if you had a better corner that had better agility and could click on and go get the ball, it definitely would have uh, been a tough throw. I feel it. Like. No, Shanta was really good. He was like another corner that All could right. hit. Darwin, slower. I believe you. But you know I'm a Jalen Ramsey, mm-hmm. Patrick Peterson, man, and Night Train. For but, sure. Uh, so now you're in. He is, this is field goal range already. Now, do you – oh, great swat right there by Khalil Mack. Jesus. But – uh. Do you know who his kicker is going right now during the game? Yeah, Dan Bailey. Okay. Do you know where he can kick the ball from? 37. 37 yard line, so he needs four yards. Now, West Coast, one of the biggest problems with West Coast as opposed to New England is the base or a draw. A draw is not going to kill you, really. Whereas mm-hmm. if you had to worry about base, it was a much bigger deal. Now, when I was watching this game, I was thinking it was time to man up the tight end in this situation because those four yards could hurt you. Yeah, from my linebacker. I messed up right there. True. A little mistake. But I feel like you kind of always use her the same linebacker. Yeah, that's one. That they, exactly. Oh, yep, I think yep. just made a play right there. I, I never. And then I, this throw. Oh, my goodness. He should have gotten sacked, dude. Yeah, that was a big play not yeah, to get sacked because get he sacked. uses his, his last time out if he gets sacked. And, um, yeah. and he's out of field goal range. Yeah, but and honestly, for him, another thing you got to know, which which is crazy to even think about, is know what the wind is, because the wind changes the way you can kick the ball. I mean, so much. Now, right there, not to cover the flats, AKG. I mean, that come on, man. No, yeah, because right there, you. I feel like you blit. You sent six. Yeah, you did. I mean, regardless, he had a timeout, so I like he could have threw a midfield and you know call the timeout, get his field goal in. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, that might have been a situation where you know he's going to try to get rid of the ball in four seconds, but maybe you don't even rush anybody. I mean, in my opinion, is you go one way or the other. You either send everybody or you drop everybody. You sent everybody. I say you just didn't take away the first read. That's all. 
Because really, a corner route, if he throws a corner out there, he's probably going to run out of bounds. You know, my, you don't, I don't know. There's a corner route and one spin could be a touchdown. So, I think regardless, he's getting a, he's getting a field goal right yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. Especially after so. that first. A lot of times in those situations before the half and, and the end of the game, your first play is the biggest play. And when he hit that post route to get, you know, 20 yards or whatever, that was a big, big play. Yeah. And, I, mean, I mean, you're seven for seven so far. Everything's going good. You're having a – what do you got? Oh, I got another ad. Jesus. This dude Compton is really trying to get his money now, man. Oh, yeah. This thing got 15,000. My bad. So, after you throw this little dot, you get six yards on the little whip route. Now, I mean, I feel like we're, we're playing the clock, which is cool. Which I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's not till the next drive when you just get wild. I don't get wild till fourth, I want to say. Till fourth quarter. But right here, I know he's about to send pressure, so I block everybody, which he didn't. Yeah, I feel like he didn't send pressure until he felt like he had you on the ropes, really. That's also another mistake I made right there. I should have low ball to Dion like I did in the first quarter, but I threw it regular. And the pass got broken up. That definitely should have been a first. I mean, it would have been a first. That's second. Are you are you ahead of me? or I'm at third and four. Third and four. Third and four. Yeah, same. All right. Yeah, all right not. Hold on, my little four verts. I mean, shit. Oh, man. You ain't trusted. But you had it again. But you had to get yeah, your I first. Yeah, I did. I wanted You had to get your first. first. Yeah. And Marcus Allen just ate right there. I mean, that's another great thing about that play is just that little. Oh, we paid him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and here we go with the run. But obviously, you would love to take this whole third quarter and then get some type of points and go up two possessions, really. So I'm not mad, but but me in this formation is an obvious stretch to the right, which pops right here. You know, I mean, he makes a good tackle, and then what kills you here is that I know you go for another run and he blows it up, yeah. which is the gamble, which is like the uh, it's the gift and the curse of running the ball. It's one reason why I hate it when I do it because obviously that when you run for six yards on first down, you feel great. That's that people, everybody would take that in real life and and. Madden life, whatever it may be, to run for six yards is a big deal. But then we come back with the same run. Yeah, that was bad. He was prepared for it the second time. I think, yeah, that's like a waste of down. He got lucky. Honestly, he'd been doing the same thing, and your right guard didn't pick him up. Your right guard didn't pick him up, (laughs) and you lose, and you lose, and now you're in pass third and long. So it's definitely third and eight. One thing I've, I've said all year is that if my whip route or my flat route can pick up the first down, I feel good. Third and eight, you will not pick up the first down on a flat route or a whip route. So that's what makes it tough. And this a Saints out just has had no success really for you this game. And that time he definitely sent everybody. And that I felt like that was the first time the whole game where he sent that many people. Boom. I kind of had it. To be honest, that's the first. Yeah, if I get, get the right spin. spin yeah, you get a spin back to the inside, middle. Yeah, but- for sure. It's been backwards. backwards, and we're gonna go for this right here. Talk about going oh, yeah. for this. I had a dot. I know he's giving that up again. I'm gonna flip this, and you know, Moss is gonna Moss. Moss is gonna Moss. So what's our dot? Are we going for verts? Verticals. I thought that honestly, watching this game, I thought the same thing. Like this is a time that he would play short. He would play the sticks. You could definitely go to verticals, and I would definitely throw it the same way. I would have rat caught it though. And it bounced off his hands. Gotta catch yeah, I told, I told myself that after. But then again, the first one, he when he caught it, I possession caught it. No, I'm yeah, saying, you I got the, yeah, the catch. possession catch. Earlier, he dove and caught it. I, I don't think I've ever possession caught my four verticals. And uh, I think both times you could have racked and caught it. But the first one that the animation you got was perfect. That one, Randy Moss, for his being the best receiver in the game. And tch, Patrick Peterson and Jalen Ramsey picked the hell out of that. But anyway, on to that. Um... Back to the uh, Randy Moss. I mean, he honestly let you down right there. You score right there, twenty-one to six. That's pretty much. You can put the jello Damn. in the fridge, really, and that, that was a big drop. And you, I mean, you got to be able to respond to that and play after that. At the end of the day, you're still up uh, nine points. Or what are you up? Eight points. So you're feeling good. It's going to take a lot to tie this game up. It's still in my oh, head. For sure. it's still in my head right now. Like, fuck, I read this game's over, but now I got to still get a stop here. He throws another freaking pick. Yeah. Well, no, it was play after that, but. That was a good dive for D two the for sure. Yeah, the, I mean vertical is good, and I, I've noticed a couple times. Well, obviously, you love the speed, but would like to have some some lumber behind those safeties so we can actually make a couple hits. 
There you go. Don't he actually do? I think that was a shorter corner route than the deep corner route. I think that might have been a stick that he threw. The, uh... That was, but then I also went hard flat instead of my usual yeah, purple. Yeah, for sure. Is that who you got in the slot? You got the uh, guy uh, Ron Parker, the God. Ron Parker, I love him. Stuff. Oh, he spins and you get the fumble that stays in, that goes out of bounds. That could have stayed in bounds. I mean, it could have stayed in bounds. <laughs> We've definitely seen uh definitely seen stranger bounces to where the uh, the ball goes stays in bounds. So, what do you think of here against single back ace? Oh, I, I'm blowing it up every time. I blow up L, almost every single like half back dive inside zone type of runs. Yeah. I'm manning out my two outside corners to the you know receivers. So if you run stretch, they get you know it gets blown up. Um. You don't really have anything right here, to be honest. Will Rob is covered by my whole curl zone by Byron and Jones. Khalil Mack just got super glitchy Max. and sacked him. So that's a huge Max, play because it's th from second and two, we get to third and eight, which is third and punt pretty much. Cause you can pretty much just play the sticks, put a bunch of zones, put a spy, and just go ahead and try to throw something. Right, yeah, I mean, I'll be tight in. I got two cloud flats, and everything deep is mine. Everything in the middle, try to bait him or whatever. And that's a tough play because, boom, he could possibly go for this for picking up that many yards. But once again, he doesn't hesitate and kicks another field goal. His third of the game, and like I said, it's kind of similar to the first half. After uh, turning the ball over on downs, only giving up three is it's always this really, game right here yeah. is literally the same with like you you attended Jets Club Series yeah. last year, right? Yeah. Last year I couldn't score. I kept seven for threes, and you know he scored touchdowns, blah blah. blah. So this is like the same score Man, from last it's year. It's the right? most important thing in this is to be able yeah. to score inside the ten yard line, inside the fifteen yard line. That's pretty much. I mean, it's been the biggest thing since it's football's been alive, and especially alive. man. Shoot. So now, no matter what, we still have another drive here. This is where I'm like, this is because you've played the clock, you played smart your whole life. Now, tell me what you're thinking right here. Uh, run the ball, go into a. I got a Compton's game his money again. <laughs> right, I'm running the ball 100 percent and go into the. Yeah, but you do, yeah, and that's what I would order. think too. But you don't do that. You come out here with this wild oh, ass hot shit. route set up, and I don't understand yeah. where we're throwing the ball here. Bad. Yeah, like what are we doing? But then it still it works. It like, doesn't work. Like what are we right. doing here? We like but I mean, it's my point. Like you said, you said before you said it will route. But it's my point. We just said just run the ball get to the fourth yard the fourth quarter, right? I'm expecting them to what? Like, to do what? I he's not gonna yeah, but, but he's not gonna run commit, right? Okay. Okay, yeah, and more often than not Everybody, it's a stop the run. He's going to have a thousand people manned up, and he's going to have you know people blitzing. So you're not going to have crazy time to do a lot of different stuff. You know, I feel like when you're in these running sets, man, people's defense is so unpredictable because you you haven't passed out of that set all game. Like you don't know what the hell he's going to do against the pass out of that set, and for you to go to that and and, and this is the, your biggest drive of the game because if you score, you win. If you don't, you, the momentum's all the way against you. And so to come out with this wild two slants and a wheel route. That's when I was like, uh-oh, yeah, yeah, he, he shook. Then we get down. sacked on the next play. Oh, man. Vic also bailed me out, though. I mean, that's what Vic does. I'm on third and 19, though. I paused it a little bit. No, no, I'm saying, like, yeah, I'm on third and 19, too. Those are two completions right there. He just got to get rid of both of me, but he did not. Even on that first down, although it was a dumb play goal, the wheel routes Marcus Allen. I could have done something with it. I mean. Dump it off, pick up Allen's feet. Now, because we got sacked, we want to sip our water and take it, take it to the fourth quarter. When we could have been in the fourth quarter with a second and ten or second and nine, really. Yeah, that was dumb. That's where I was like, damn, that's that. That's when I was like, all right, he overthinking shit. He's nervous. Now he not calm, cool, African AKG chilling. Now he just getting a little. He, now he gang ganging. He's shaking a little bit. I'm like, uh oh. Now he he letting he letting ice cap at him and he's getting shook. That's that's how I feel. Sheesh. Well. And right here, man, God damn, dude. Like, what happened? Jamal Adams is fast, so I play against Jamal all the time. That's literally almost every time a completion of Randy Moss. I'm high balling that guarantee. Oh, the, the over the one? Oh, man, I, I, just, I just saw the third down completion. Now I'm on fourth down here. So, no. what, are, are you really mm -hmm. running Saints out here? Is that, that the call? Yeah, yeah, 100%. But it's not a curl or anything. It's an in route. So, he either literally choosing the running back, I mean, the RB post route or – the in route, and that works every yeah, single time. Let me look. At, I'm gonna look at this play again, cause I think you do a great job of like a, a phenomenal job of stepping up here in the pocket. And I mean, cause the blitz didn't get there, and yet you had him. I mean, I think I highballed this too. It's hard to. 
Damn. It's hard to question that. It definitely is, but you definitely could have just threw it too and get a first down. But yeah. I said that's why I said the game was all about high balls, man. It's definitely something that got overthrown, and it's definitely something that uh got completed, and that, that one changed the game. But like I said, you're still in uh you're still in field goal range, or you're still up by five points, so you, he still needs a touchdown. Yeah. Ah, man. Right here, I'm like, okay, whatever. This kid is not getting a touchdown. So I'm still just chilling, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. I mean, not, I don't know. This is like, I feel like Ice right now, I feel like he's either a mesh post or he's a deep corner out. There's nothing else to it. Yeah, he's, and another thing that I was really happy about, he had no route specialist, and he was in West Coast. So there was just, I wasn't like, worried about no deep corner routes whatsoever. Literally two plays. Yeah, it's definitely a... But now this is where we got to stop Randy Moss. And the flat route, for some reason, got... Let's see, Patrick Peterson, Ramsey, tackling better than that. Frank O'Hara <laughs> gets the second and two. Uh, now, this is where I'm like, man, Ice can't run that same stupid-ass play he ran last time to get sacked. I'm definitely – he has not ran the ball one time. He has Ricky Williams. I don't care what version of Ricky Williams. You got to run second and two. You cannot come out here and try to another cute pass, man. Sometimes these kids, these youth, all you youth kids try to think way too much and try to be too cute down here. Actually, too cute all over the field. Sometimes you just got to old school, give it to Ricky Williams, hope he fights, and – See, uh, for me, if I'm running the ball, I just saw, like, you almost shot that gap a little bit. So, I'm a little bit scared to run dive again. So, I might go with a stretch or something along those lines. But he goes with another cute pass play. And Randy Moss. And that play is tough. But what's tough about it is he could have easily, one, overthrown it. Two, got a bad animation and not kept his feet in bounds, man. That's definitely something that... uh was lucky. I mean, I don't want to say it was super lucky, but it's definitely luck involved in that type of pass, man. Especially the way it's lucky. Yeah, so because every I hop. definitely am somebody that throws high high in routes in the back of the end zone, and sometimes they just don't get their feet in. And for him to catch that was a big deal. Now the two point conversion. Once I, I will tell you this: once you motion a wide receiver in the set, I, I'm pretty much a thousand percent thinking you're going to run the ball, and you blew it up. So now through all all these l- l- baby mistakes, the, un- the definitely unlucky things that happen to you, you have the whole game in your hands to go ahead and score points here. And pretty much, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm still cool. Like I'm just chilling. Like I haven't. I'm winning. Yeah, this game. I can't lie. As, as if I'm ice, drive. I don't get that two point conversion. I'm like, damn, <laughs> this shit is rough. Honestly, but you still gotta go down the field. You still gotta uh, take some time and manage it the right way. To be honest, this game has been like determined by high balls. Again, another verticals he gave up, but I did not block my running back, so touchdown is off the board. Yeah, boards. that's one thing that does kill when I run that play. It doesn't really have. That's the only quick. Or that's the only. Protection. That's the only quick route. Sometimes I like to put a, put one of the guys on a drag or something, but it, at the same time, when you do that, it messes up the deep attack on that play. Okay. Right there, I miss a read. Well, like I said a million mm. times, you had Gurley pretty much every play, but the but the way cover two oh, plays is like it's it's so tough to pick up those yards really. And right here on um, let me know if you had third and six. Um, about third and yeah, five. You coming to the line right now? Jesus. So all right. Yeah, I want to hear about this Look, play. I'm pausing. The I'm pausing play. this. The honest fired this play, so I cannot call the timeout. He's literally red and everything. So the same play I ran earlier. I finally get that wheel route off. Boom. Marcus Allen does Marcus Allen stuff. That's what would have happened earlier. But, again, it was a dumb play goal because, hey, regardless, I should have ran the ball. Yeah, so. But that's what I was thinking. Get rid of the ball and Marcus Allen do him. Because just... the entire game, he's deported that corner route on the left side every single play. I mean, you got to stay in bounds right there and make a highlight at the same oh, time. That's just bad I... stick work, honestly. You guys got to be a touchdown. Because no. then you would have been a legend if you pulled that off. And this guy missing 400 yeah. hit sticks. Ice might be the worst tackler. But, uh, yeah, I understand. But, like I said, man, sometimes sometimes the game situation just calls for a run. You know, it just calls, like, like, all right, let's just keep the game, keep, make the game shorter. I've always said, man, when you had a lead in a man game, you wanted to be short. When you had a lead, when you're behind, you want the game to be as long as possible. Like, right here on, on two, 228 left, 
For me, that's an automatic run or something like that. And you do a drag that could have been dropped. The fact he caught that was huge for you. And people, I mean, when we say man players are lucky, in it, and obviously that play, nobody will ever point to that play being lucky. But the fact he caught that and was able to take just a snap throw drag that was covered, and he actually got the strip animation. The fact he caught that and it's going to go to the two minute warning is huge because I mean, it could have easily been dropped and it saved him more time. Because if you're ice, you're you you're pissed right now. You you are in a hole because you are two first downs away from losing the game. True. I mean, that's all you need is a first down. You get a first down. He's in, in a dark spot. This was a great play uh, because that wheel route took away that flat zone. It took it right back, took him to the outside. You could snap, mm-hmm. almost snap and throw that. Yeah. yeah. Shoot, that was a big that was a big play in the game. Still using, and that was a PA wide receiver in to just kill cover two. Now here, what's the play calls that you're thinking about running right here? Obviously, this is one. Strikes, I'm running the ball. Now, is this three straight runs, or, or what are we thinking? Uh, not three straight runs, no. I, hmm. I think on first down, I passed the ball. But then again, if I was to go back and do it all over, I, like, I would have passed the ball on first, to be honest. Yeah, right it's there. probably the easiest time to pass is on first down. I'll tell you what, if I'm – you can win the game right here. If you A first down wins you the game, period. No matter how you get it. And then another horrible animation by girl. Let me like, see. I'm a little bit behind. Let me see. What was you right. a whip route? That was just a flat route when I threw a leg because he was yeah. saying. Yeah, that happens sometimes, man. Man, yeah, if you get even if you get two yards on that. But like I said, that was a read you, you never made the whole game was the fact that his yellow zone was underneath and he had a cloud flat over the top of it. So you could have kind of hit him for three or four yards every time, even though it never really looked that open. Do we go for this right here? Uh, well, I'm on a, or you still it's fine. a good job of you not throwing the ball away and actually staying in bounds and taking this. Do I go for this right here? Uh, You've done it before, so I like. Um, definitely. Knowing you're boxing your opponent, it was a he's different situation. Three, no goals. It was a different situation because sure. my game, but I was down, I was losing right by three. I couldn't take the lead. I think you have yeah. to. I, I think I don't know. I feel like your little passes have not been there this game. Like every time you've tried to get like a short pass, I don't think they've been That's there. Exactly what I told defense, myself. His defense is really good, and I mean, what play, if you would have went for this? What play? Because I mean, I'm probably still running Saints and out. Saints yeah. out was not in, that's that's thrown out. So I was thinking PA wide receiver in, but he would have deep quarter that side because he's now catching on. And like, I, I mean, I don't know. I know he would have not sent you know pressure because he's gonna sit in coverage with a spy. Mike Vick can't really do much, and just uh, man, short situation. I just need four yards so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I took my foot goal 100%. I'm taking it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you had a lead, man. I mean, I, he has gone down up and down the field. But for me, if you get on defense right here, and this is one thing that any play that's a sack, anything that's inbounds is going to take 15, 20 seconds off the play clock. If you can get two plays inbounds, then, I mean, it, it's going to end the drive. And talk about this kick right here. Obviously, I mean, that's a pretty good kick, really, to the fat guy. To get him to the twenty nine yard line. I mean, so you got one minute left and three and he has no timeouts. What are you thinking on defense? Oh, let me forward. Uh fuck is that? Oh, I'm still doing what I've been doing to me. No. Uh yeah, to be honest, I'm doing exactly exactly what I've been doing throughout the whole game. All right. No, I'm, I'm gonna, exactly what I did right there, and Dion just don't end the I'm game. I'm gonna pause this this real quick. Now you're playing against Bunch, and now I'm running through the I'm gonna get to the second down play. You're playing against Bunch. What okay. what are like what are the, the the two things that that can beat you in bunch? Especially you said West Coast. What are the two things down the field that can beat you in bunch? Corner strike, miss post. So either a post route from B or a corner route from corner, outside. Corner That's route. the only, honestly, or like he just ran there on first down was verticals was the only and and you can cover that vertical route. These are the only plays that are going to get ten plus yards on you. I mean, and yeah. they are and and I'll tell you right now, even mess post probably won't get out of bounds unless you miss a tackle. The biggest thing, right? Mm-hmm. How it is if you make a tackle in bounds, well, no matter what the play is, any tackle in bounds is going to take, like I said, fifteen to twenty seconds off the clock. So if you take any tackle in bounds right now, it's going to win you the game. So my whole goal right now is just, man, you know what? I'm if I tackle him in bounds, I win this game. No matter what the hell the play is, whether it's a flat route, whether it's a drag, 
I don't care. So I'm thinking I'm going to hope to God ice throws the ball in the middle of the field. Even if it is mesh post where he gets, you know, 12 yards, 15 yards, whatever it may be, because he's going to get tackled in bounds. Now, I can cover mesh post. I can cover verticals. Now, so many times when we play when we, we play bunch, obviously everybody's played against bunch. It's going to come down to the corner route and the backside drag. drag. It's so hard to not jump down on his backside drag, and that's exactly what you do and you rely on. I, I, I'm assuming you're still quartering this guy on the outside. Yeah. And, and to cover this, and we jump down on the drag, and he's able to roll out. And people don't understand how big a deal that he's able to roll out on this pass. Because being able to roll yeah. out makes the throw just just the trajectory of the throw that much easier to complete. If he hold on, pause, pause it real quick. I'm, I'm right before the play, the snap. So if you're in nickel normal right now, are you sending heat, or you, you, like you said, keeping or just playing coverage and letting him throw it inbounds midfield or whatever? I mean, for tap. me, I mean, for me, if you can make it, I, I, I honestly, I, I'm thinking what I'm thinking about defense is no corner route, no corner route, no corner route, no corner route. Every, before the play, every second. Now, obviously, the quarter right. does a good job of covering the corner route, but if you let him throw out, roll out like that, man, it's going to be open. And that's what yeah. kills you because you didn't blitz. And, and part of me is like, oh, man, I'm cool with regular cover two here or even cover two with a deep blue on my linebacker or something because if he throws a flat route and you you pay, what do you pay these two outside guys do, to do? Tackle. If he throws a flat route to Franco Harris for six yards and gets tackled, that kills his whole drive. So and if he throws the drag in the middle of the field for eight yards and get tackled, that hurts. So essentially, like I Man, said, that was, like that I said, the, one because he was able to roll out. And you'll see, and Franco Harris just killed Khalil Mack. See, I'm pissed about that. And he's able to roll out instead of throwing his ball all the way across the field where you can click on and try to get an animation. He rolls all the way over here, 15 yards out the pocket, and just he's just wide open. And it goes back to the same thing. I don't. You put Ron Parker in a cloud flat out here or purple whatever it may be if he throws the drag and he gets tackled for eight yards bang now he's he's either he's no huddle in corner play and he's snapping the next play and with, with 44 seconds on the clock so right now mm-hmm. and me myself i don't care what defense i am i'm guarding corner row you know and that's mm-hmm. what, and, and honestly Khalil Mack get getting a bad animation on the tight end which he normally whoops his ass every time just killed you because that's what allowed him to, to roll out. And then after this, the main reason why he rolled out is because I didn't blitz that corner. That's oh, why. Yeah, for sure. You blitz the corner, you can't roll out. My logic behind not blitzing the corner is because I wanted him to cover the flats or whatever. It was just stupid. I mean, I was, like, it was just a here. user. I honestly, it was pretty much just a user that was stupid. And then we go with drag. Now, I feel like. Now it's pretty much do I want to save my timeouts for the ice or do I want to save my timeouts to get the ball back? Same. Same. But I feel like why didn't – okay, if you wanted to get the ball back, why didn't you call timeout right there? I, mean, I, just, I was mad as shit, just making dumb decisions, to be honest. Because if know. you call a timeout there, because you're going to – the game's going to end and you're going to have a timeout in your pocket. Because once you don't call timeout, it's like, you know what, I'm cool. I'm just going to use my timeouts to uh, ice the kicker ice. Yeah, after that. Especially after this when you blew up the running back. Especially after that. No, he's got to run another play, and, and that, that's what's crazy. That that that's another thing. It was like, if I blow up the run back now, I'm like, okay, this is 35, 45, 52 yard field goal, and it, this is a million percent quarterback sneak because he didn't want to use lose any more yards. And you call timeout right away, so now you want to get the ball back. Now, if you had called timeout on the first one, now we're looking at 40 seconds on the clock. So, yeah. and, and now you have a, a realistic chance of getting a field goal, but because you didn't call timeout right away, bang! Now I'm going for the ice. And who knows what? No, happens. actually, if I call a timeout right there, he's that was first and ten. Regardless, I would have not like I wouldn't get ball no, no, back. No, no. Yes, time. you, you would have definitely got the ball back. I don't think so. You, 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 yes, you would have got the ball back. You have it's two timeouts. He still would have had one more down no. to snap the ball. Look what happened, dude. You got a first down. There's 50 seconds. He throws this in route. 50 seconds. That's first down. Boom. Call timeout. Now there's 48 seconds left. He snaps the ball, runs again, boom, there's 44 seconds left. He runs again, boom, there's 40 seconds left. And you have no timeouts, he kicks the field goal, you have 35 seconds. So you, you essentially, the way you use timeouts, you didn't give yourself a chance to get the ball back, really, and you didn't ice him. So you pretty much just, you shit the bed in this little situation. Really, because like I said, you, you use your timeouts for two things. One for ice, or one to get the ball back. 
And like I said, it's a tough decision. I would have called timeout right away on the first one. But because you didn't, that's cool. But now you got to use your timeouts to ice them. Because, but now after you re- you realize that, like, damn, I can actually get the ball back. So I'm going to use my timeouts to get the ball back. So it's definitely just, I mean, it's just definitely different things. And that's what happens. And then we give Ice this little baby kick, in which I know he would have missed the shit out of Ice field goal because he would have been nervous. He would have been like, the Twitch chat's going to kill me because my name is Don't Care About Ice, but I missed the Ice field goal. And instead, he got this little baby field goal here for the win. But, that's it. Listen, moral of the story, regardless, I got fucking cheated, and this game whoa, sucks. Whoa, so how is that the moral of the story? Yes, that is the moral of the no, story, it's man. Not. It's not. Should have never been in this position. What are you telling nah, me? But like, you made some dumbass mistakes too. I mean, I, obviously, I obviously, if Randy never, Moss, Chris, these mistakes would have never been made if this game was good. Literally, that's. I mean, all. I mean, I don't think. I, I know I, I sound really stupid think, right now. I mean, I feel, I feel like you were unfortunate. But like I said, the game should. Well, we both agreed the game should have been ten nothing, right? Well, the game should have been ten nothing, and then uh. No, it should have been up twenty one to six. But it also should have been ten nothing to start the game, and he got that overthrow pick. And then, I mean, over those. Wait, which one? Ice is over those. That's his his mistake, though. That's his mistake. It's literally a user mistake. Mine wasn't. If we're being real, he threw the ball before Moss made that cut, which he couldn't react. And that happens on every high ball. I did the same user mistake, by the way. I threw it before Moss cut on that uh, Saints out. I mean, for sure. When that fourth and six or fourth fourth and eight. If Moss catches that one and it's 21 to six, I mean, that's the jellos in the fridge. Like I said. Yeah, it's a GG. That's just still... Bro, to do that 99 catch and, like... But like I said, do you do not think that's a user mistake going for a uh, possession catch? Possession catch? No, because I did it the first catch and he caught it. Same exact everything. Yeah. I don't know. I just know that um, I don't possession catch some things. Like, let the kid that comes up to your nipple talk shit to you. That's crazy. No, but for real, it's, no, just, no, no, no. it's just it's just it's just little yeah, things you could do better. But like I said, if Randy Moss was the best player in the game, catches that pass, then you probably win the game for sure. But you know, you live and you learn. Every little thing only can make you better at the game. Ice, Ice is not the youngest. Is Ice the youngest looking man player out there? And I don't know. Don't care. But. So what's next for AKG after this heartbreaking? Defeat? Oh, I'm not making this draft champion live event. There's nothing else. Oh, you gonna be a draft champions expert now? Why trips is not in draft champions? What are you tending to run? Oh, it in is. draft champions. Freestyle them. Freestyle. Oh, I'm picking picking nickel normal every play. That's all. I mean every draft. Nickel normal. Okay. If you give me New England Patriots playbook, Tampa Bay. Okay, AKG. That's everybody. That's. I mean, I I know, I know, but I'm saying like everybody would pick New England. But it has no nickel normal. So let's say they gave me your no. Hold on, let me put it like this: If I have a decent bunch in the playbook with nickel normal, I'm picking that playbook over New England just because it has no nickel normal. That's my draft, whatever going into drafting. That's my drafting strategy. All right. Yeah. I don't think nickel normal is that crazy good, but no, it's really good. Have you played draft champions in these sheds? The sh- nickel normal sheds suck. Nickel normal sheds suck. Bro, <laughs> you haven't played DC then. Damn, who, is this who is this guy that wore a suit? Hold on. You guys, chat, you guys didn't tell me about this guy that Ice played that wore a suit. This guy right here. Who the hell is this black guy with the glasses? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this legend that you guys didn't tell me about? Chat. He wore a suit and made him throw in a Jets uniform, so he threw the suit oh, over. That's swag. <laughs> oh, that's the he got the most. How old do you think he is? If you had to guess, what happened? How old do you think he is? If you had to take a guess, I mean, he 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 pushing thirty for sure. His shit leaning a little oh, bit. I I mean, he had a hat on, so he looked a little younger before he took the hat off. But I thought he was in his twenties. I meant to thirty. I was like, what the? That's hell. That's definitely that's, that's definitely. Tough. He had way more drip than all of y'all. <laughs> Yeah, he had drip for sure. Mean, well, a classic drip. My drip was young drip, so I'm good. Young drip. There's no such thing as young you drip. Think, young drip means what? I don't know how to dress yet. That's what it means. Are That's you crazy as hell? Yeah. Air Force One classics? Air are Force you kidding Ones me? are drip now? Like, is that really what's going That's on? That's drippy. Bruh, <laughs> you crazy as hell. But all right, oh, so. man. There were two guys at the tournament that had Air Force Ones on. We were both drip. Who was the other guy that had Air Force Ones? This means a lot. Yeah, yeah. 
me and Alan. Alan? Alan is too young Alan. to ever know how to dress. Like, he's not even been alive. What? Alan has not even been alive enough. To, like, he hasn't even been outside. He's never been to a bar, a club, anywhere. How does he know how to dress? Bro, 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 you crazy. We're giving... We're giving Air Force fi- One's on with skinny jeans. Chet. MCM... MC, bro, come on. Chat, we're giving 15-year-olds the right to know how to dress? Alan don't even talk Man, to listen. chicks. How do... How, I can't. I can't. See, that, this I don't thing, know what chicks y'all talk to, but let's this chat has gone way too wild now that all of a sudden we're Alan. <laughs> Alan is the one we go to for dressing tips. This is wild. Bro, that's old. Wild. Listen, almost every rapper. Well, I should say, I don't want to bring the race into this, but especially Chicago black rappers. Every one of them wear Air Force Ones, throw on whatever skinny jeans, and I'm playing with a wavy ass belt and just throw on a white tee. That's dripping, bro. Oh, come my on, God, bro. man, these kids now, dude, crazy. that's crazy. Just crazy. I will see Alan. We'll see what he looks like this week. You know what I'm saying, but anyway, AKG, I appreciate you joining the podcast. Make sure y'all follow AKG. I'm going to put all his links in the description. He took a loss. We're not going to give. We're not going to give Ice any shout outs. He don't need any. He'll probably get some this week. He probably plays one of the toughest games coming up. But like I said, follow my man AKG. And can we get some streams for the DC grind? Like what happened, man? You just gave up on the stream life. Well, AKG, you yeah. with me? Nah. So we back with with the with the draft champion streams. The dra- yeah, hey, I mean I'm streaming every day. Right. I've been streaming the past three. All right, so, so make sure y'all check it out. I'm gonna put all AKG links in the description. So make sure you guys go ahead and hit that link to go ahead and check him out. So I appreciate you coming by, talking about the loss. I know it was a tough one. Oh, oh, I'm oh, what the fuck is Alan talking about? All right, gang, gang, I will holler at you. Ah, later, bro. That was AKG. Now it's time, and we're glad to talk about a loss. I know it's really tough to talk about a loss, man, but the one thing about that AKG will learn is that the game, although the game cheats everybody at any given moment, from here and there, you can get cheated. There's a lot of little mistakes that he made. Nothing crazy, wild that we could laugh at, but it's definitely things that he could learn from and become a better player from, man, because you don't lose, you just learn, and that's one thing that I really and big on and the people that always have shitty attitudes towards the game. I mean, there's definitely things that went wrong for him that game. Things that weren't super unlucky. Obviously, the Moss drop was huge. But there were other things in the game that didn't go his way. And, I mean, I really just hope that everybody can have a better attitude towards the game. I know the game is bad. Sometimes it pisses us all off. But you can definitely have a bad attitude towards the game. Now, let's talk about... And Bugs is in my chat talking about boot cuts i don't even wear boot cuts that's wild that a human being still wears boot cuts i don't even wear boot cuts to work and i work but anyway let's get back to the let's get back to the reason why we're here boys jets club series is over let's talk about it let's talk about this right here this is the bracket if you have not filled out your bracket have your chance to go ahead and, and fill it out you can check out my twitter that is where the bracket is at i have been Viewing over all the brackets and all the things you guys have talked about, all the guys, all the things you guys have uh, put in the bracket challenge to so go ahead and bracket challenge. We're gonna give away two hundred dollars cash, hundred dollars of players lounge, any books you want from uh, Matt and Turf. Whether you want the Skimbo ebook, the W defense, W offense, you want some uh, whatever the hell else you want on Matt and Turf. Let me know when you win, and we'll give you that fifty dollars to anybody that comes up in the final four. Two needed gaming store. You can get any t-shirt, any hoodie you want. It is winter time. Make sure you guys get some hoodies. That link is also below in the description. So, like I said, filling your bracket is not too late. We have another day until the live club series starts. We're going to go over this bracket, man. I want to know if you guys want to go ahead and uh, you can talk about these games with me, chat. If you're not seeing these podcasts live, it is on my Twitch. That link is below. You can check out me, the podcast, every Tuesday, 7 o'clock. So you guys can check that out. You also check out a lot of games I play and things like that. So let's go over this bracket, man. This bracket is where it's at, man. It's obviously one of the, one of the best fields in Madden history. The tournament has definitely uh, come down to uh, some great players, especially on the NFC side. Four belt winners on the NFC side with Kiv, um, Mo, Ghost, and Drini. No belt winners over here on the AFC side. So let's start with this. Uh, these first couple games. We're going to start on this NFC side. And we have Ice versus J-Wall. 
J Wall obviously upset Skimbo. He is the youngest looking Madden player. I believe Ice versus J Wall is going to break the record for youngest Madden matchup, at least looks wise. And the one advantage J Wall has is that J Wall played two months ago. So nobody really knows what he's doing. Obviously, it's probably pretty similar. But what he has is that video of Ice playing two games just days ago. He knows what Ice is running. It's, it's West Coast. It's no route comes. He's going to be really prepared for it. I mean, I know he's got all that crew of young weirdos and, and Croft and uh, who I don't know, Fancy, all them guys. So he's definitely getting ready to go ahead and win. So it's definitely um an advantage for J-Wall being is that Ice has just played. And Ice has um, just, I mean, he, he, like I said, he barely beat AKG. And he definitely uh, he definitely has all his game footage on film. So it's definitely an advantage for J-Wall. So I like J-Wall to come out of this first game over Ice simply because, oh, I don't want to move that whole thing, though. Whoa. Simply, I mean, the stream thing for me is a big deal. It's definitely a, a disadvantage. And I think Jay Wall, if he if if he's as good and as quick, I think he's a quick kid. I think he's pretty smart. If he's as quick and as smart as I think, he will use that to a big advantage. Definitely be prepared for ice. Uh, and I would say runs that trip tight end. I've played Jay Wall recently in the last month, and he really gets rid of the ball very well. Makes really good reads. I really I think he's going to go ahead and win that game. Next we have Blocky versus Quan. Obviously, we all know Blocky. He had a great year last year. He was one of the best players last year. This year, honestly, I haven't seen Blocky play too much. I don't know a damn thing about Quan. You know, and this is where a lot of times we'll get um, stuck on the name. And right now, for me, I, I think I got to go because I don't know anything about Quan. I know, I, I'm assuming he played Carry. Carry was in that club. And this is where it gets tough to wear. I don't know what Quan's doing. I don't know if it's a two tight end set. I don't know if it's bunch. I don't know if it's trips tight end. I don't know if it's jumbo. I don't know what he's doing. But obviously, if you beat Kerry, who's Kerry's a good player. I don't think Kerry's an elite man player. But I think he's definitely a tough player to play. And uh, so, uh, so Quan runs a little trips. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever played Quan. But I definitely play Blocky. Blocky is somebody that I've played a lot. Seriously, uh... So I, def I definitely, I still got to go blocky. It's still definitely, the name still means something to me. The experience still means something to me. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and uh, advance the blocky man in this matchup. But like I said, man, like I said, I really don't know too much about Quan. So it's definitely going to be a matchup of somebody we haven't seen play really. Yeah, Blocky definitely got past Matt, and I, I, I as far as Quan getting past Carry and Blocky getting past Matt, I, I, I mean, I would say Carry and Matt are kind of on the same level of player, you know. I, I might even give the edge to Carry in that one, but they're similar. And, and like I said, Blocky has a lot of experience. Was in the Final Four Ultimate League last year, so he's definitely prepared. He's definitely gonna get 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 a lot of practice in, honestly. So he won that. So that's gonna be enough. And we'll get to that the second round. Next round. We're going to go ahead here with um with Wesley Joe Rice against Nick the Beast. Now I don't know much about Nick the Beast boys, but I'll tell you this: he came back from 24 down against Jet. Any man that can come back from 24 down is definitely definitely has heart. Definitely doesn't quit, and definitely. And the one thing about if you're going to able to come back from 24 nothing, man, it definitely shows that you can make an in-game adjustment. Now, obviously, if you go down 24 nothing, what you started the game with didn't really work, but you were able to play in-game and go ahead and make some changes, pick up on what your opponent's doing, and adjust your game accordingly. And to come back from 24 nothing, man, Nick the Beast really showed a lot in that. We go back to Wesley, man. Wesley definitely was um, played three months ago. It seems like. And he's definitely prepared. Wesley is uh, one of the best young players in Madden. And I certainly think he can handle this first round matchup of Nick the Beast. Or, yeah, Nick the Beast. But like I said, man, it's really impressive to come back from 24 down. Any man that can come back from 24 down definitely uh, is going to be in the game. And so, but I got Wesley coming out of that one. Let me know what you guys have, what you like. So, um, <clears throat> like I said, so I got J Wall blocking Wesley advancing so far. Next, we got Nikel. They call him Some Serious or something like that on Twitter. I don't really know. 
He's definitely a new booty against Spoto, who is the young, another kid that look. I mean, these ki- like kids are just super young nowadays. So this matchup, what I got to look at, obviously I don't know Nikel. I don't know what Spoto's doing right now. Spoto has a little bit, even for being that young, he definitely has a little bit of experience. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, what's going call it? Move him past Nikel, who's, who's, probably, who's a new booty for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and move Spoto past Nikel. This is this is where this is where people look at the AFC and kind of just say that it's weak because you got this you got the Nikels, you have Nick and Quan is like these guys are like I don't want to say first round buys, but compared to this side, they're first round buys. But like I said, those are the first four I have advancing over there. <clears throat> It changed a couple things. So, like I said, we like Spoto. We like Wesley. We like Black. We like Pretty much chalk so far. No upsets. Nobody I really like. And uh, I think Spoto was 100% in all the brackets that I pulled out uh, being, winning the first round. Kind of the same with Wesley. Quant, the, the, ice and, the ice and J-Wall game kind of went 50-50, honestly, in the brackets that you guys have submitted. Blackie was the favorite, obviously, in this one. And Wesley and Spoto, these were pretty much... 90 plus percent favorites, but the J Wall Ice game was 50 50. Now let's go down to the bottom here of the bracket. We have the AFC West. Huge. Huge. AFC West is definitely tough. We have Turbo Jeff and Allen. I think one person picked Turbo Jeff to beat Allen. Allen obviously beat Problem. He's like the he's like the name that we know, but the rest of the man world doesn't know yet. They don't know what I really don't even know what Allen looks like. Apparently he wears skinny jeans and Air Force Ones. Which I'm not really the biggest fan of, but you know, kids dress how kids dress. But um, Allen definitely is. I, I mean, I've played Allen in probably the last three years, and, and Allen is is really good. So I fully expect him to come out of this, and I fully expect him to make a make a pretty serious run here in the Madden uh, Club Championship. So I'll push him past Turbo Jeff. Although Turbo Jeff, obviously, I mean, he's that in that PS4 click that uh, them young kids that really know what they're doing between Crush and Kiv and all them. You know, those guys are really close. So I'm assuming Turbo Jeff is definitely uh, definitely going to be prepared. So he's definitely not going to be a pushover. Like he's not going to be a first round buy like some of these other guys. Maybe like I said I don't. A lot of these guys are PlayStation two, four guys, so I don't really play them as often. So I don't know them as well as some of these big names that I've played a lot. So I, but I'll definitely give the edge to Allen in that game. Next game, Pavon versus War Daddy. This might be I don't know War Daddy from a can of paint. So, like I said, I'm not going to count anybody out, but I don't know these people. I didn't watch the stream. Nothing's really that stood out to me to where it's like I should pick him. So, I'm going to go ahead with the other favorite. Move Pavon on to the second round. Like I said, pretty much for me so far is all chalk picks. Nobody really exciting. No real upsets. These are just who I think is going to advance. And um, let's go down here to the bottom. This is the best game of the first round. On the AFC side. Oh, I don't know. J Wall and Ice is pretty. But J Wall and Ice, they both could. I, they, they, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't care who wins J Wall and Ice. Like, good, good, good. It's like, yeah, guys, okay. Well, you know, but Joke and Deliverance, man, there's blood there. There's bad blood there. Joke, probably one of Joke's worst losses in his uh, Madden career, which has been long as hell. Like, Joke's been playing Madden since he could pick up a controller, I think, and he's been good at it. And um, but I would I would venture to say that his loss versus Deliverance was probably the worst one of his career, really. Especially uh, I especially expect him to be super prepared for that read option. Drags over the middle, a playmaker every once in a while. I know what's coming. I, I will tell you defensively, Joke is probably one of the most prepared players in the world, without a doubt. Seriously, but offensively. Joke is average to below average. It's not even that. I just feel like he, he's going to make a mistake. That's the reason he lost the deliverance last year. He just made mistakes, man. And I will put this whole game, man. If Joke doesn't turn over the ball, he should win the game. It's as simple as that. That's how I feel. If he doesn't turn over the ball, even if he punts, even if he doesn't score touchdowns, if he doesn't turn over the ball, he should win the game. And the one thing about Joke, man, he posted his team. And you guys can check out Joke on Twitter. I believe it's just Joke or uh, Echo Fox Joke or whatever, whatever it may be. You guys probably follow him already. But he posted his team, and I noticed his defensive linemen weren't very good. 
you know, I play. Obviously, we all play the game. We all have our own opinions. I feel like sometimes you need a couple good D linemen there, and especially for Deliverance, who wants to run that read option. And he definitely, uh, he definitely wants to um, run the ball. And if you can stop the run and force him to do the, the three slants and stuff, it's definitely going to be tough for him to move the ball. So, so Joke doesn't have crazy good D linemen. So, and for me as a man player, what that tells me is that he has the run boxed up regardless. So he's not really worried about inside zone or read option, whatever run may be coming his way. That's what it tells me. If he had big linemen, I think it would tell me that he's afraid of the run. So I think he's prepared. I think he's going to be more prepared than Deliverance. I think this is this is just nobody's seen Joke play. He hasn't been on a stream. Even though Deliverance played a couple, like two months ago, he's still on the stream. Joke knows what he's going to do. I like Joke to get his revenge, man. I said Joke... If he can put it together, he can win this whole tournament. But I I think this first game is probably going to be his toughest. It's definitely going to be tougher than the second round game. And, and I think if he if he can stop the run and doesn't turn over the ball, that's the key to the game. That's always been the key to the joke, man. If he don't turn over the ball and make a stupid-ass pass, he can beat delivers. And there's no doubt in my mind about that. But we'll see. If he does that, he'll win. But I, got, I picked him. Next, we got I Love God or H. Dot against Crush. These are two guys we haven't seen play on the live event anywhere. Crush has probably been one of the better players to not make a live event, to not be in a position to play a game like this, and he's going to be uh, and he's going to be thrown right into the fire against this guy. I love God who ran the Raven, who won the Ravens Club Series. I love God is one of Skimbo's boys, man. And Skimbo told me, man, I really go back with this guy. He's really good at Madden. He definitely can make a run. That's pretty much what uh what Skimbo told me. So, I don't really know much about this game. Like I said, I haven't watched him play. I haven't watched Crush play. But to me, a lot a lot of men is who you play with, who you play against, who you prepare with. And I know Crush, obviously, between Crush. Oh, where's my damn it? Crush, obviously, he, he's friends with some good players. I know that. And pretty much that's the biggest difference right now between me and, and I love guys. That Crush is preparing with some good players, man. So, I definitely, I'm going to cr- crush the advantage here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick him to win this game. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be easy. Oh, I don't want to move the whole thing now. Oh, oh, oh. I think it's definitely gonna be tough to. Uh, oh, did I not delete it? What am I doing? W. It's definitely gonna be tough to. Um. Uh, let me delete some of these. It's gonna be a tough game to play. But I definitely feel like Crush is going to have an advantage simply because of who, who, what you call it, of who we um who he practices with. I like I'm I'm a big stickler in that, and people that can help you get prepared. And I think that's the only reason I would really give Crush the advantage because, like I said, I really don't know much about either of these players. Chat, let me know who you guys like between Crush and and I Love God. Because, like I said, some of you guys are PlayStation players. You play against these guys often. Me, myself, I am not a PlayStation player. So some of these guys are a a little bit foreign to me, honestly. But I just know, and you grow up around it, when you're in the man community, you kind of just know, like, all right, this guy talks to him. He's going to be prepared for this. So I'm definitely going to give Crush just a little bit of advantage for that. I said, that's my AFC round one, man. We definitely got a... We definitely have... Pretty much chalk all the way around the board, man. I pretty much want the safest picks. No upsets. This is pretty much between the the ice and J Wall game was 50-50. The rest of the games I pretty much went went uh went chalk, honestly. Now let's slide over here to the NFC. This is where we get into the we get into the good shit. This is where we get into the goods. The NFC is crazy. And I will start by telling you this. There's not a single soul that picked Evil O to beat Drenny. And Evil O, I love you, but I will not be the first one to pick you. I'm definitely going to pick the Drenny man. I think uh, Drenny is... Uh, and when I look at all these players, man, it, there's, they're all good band players. But I think Drenny's elite. Uh... I think highly of Journey, especially defensively. I don't think Journey's the best offensive player in the world. But defensively, he's one of the best. And that is that is what's going to give him the advantage going into that game. Evil O, obviously, like I said, when you practice with good people, it's going to help you. He, he's in a good camp. 
So they're definitely be prepared for Journey, but Journey is kind of like, as far as people to be prepared for, he's probably one of the worst because I, I really don't know. I feel like his defense is random. His offense is random pretty much. He's going to freestyle a lot. So I definitely, I, I definitely like Journey in that matchup. The next one, Figgy versus Ghost. Ghost, Ghost is one. I think Ghost is pretty elite man player, man. I, I think Figgy's good. Hasn't played in a long time. I believe Ghost's games are on right now. Uh, I want to pick Figgy because it's the Eagles, man. I really do. But I, re- like I said, I really think Ghost is elite. I really do. I think Ghost is one of those elite man players on this list, and I think he's going to go ahead and go ahead and take care of Figgy for the second year in a row. Move on to the second round to face Drenny, which I mean is probably one of the best matchups so far. So I'm going to pick Ghost. Like I said, I want to pick the Eagles. I really do. But I think. Uh, Whatchamacallit, Ghost is going to take care of. What do you think, Chet? You think Figgy gets it? Next is the best matchup of the first round. I mean, obviously, shout out over here to J. Wall and Ice. Joking Delivers is pretty good. I think there's some good ones down here. Dragon Strafing is a good game. But Mo versus Clef is a heavyweight matchup, man. It really is. It's something that I've watched on Twitch a bunch. I know you guys have watched these two play. Mo, I mean, I, Mo is one of the best man players of all time, top five without a doubt. And uh, Clef is Clef has been one of the best online players for a long time, man. And especially came on late last year, really on the Twitch community, really popping people and really playing well. And this year was his year, really pop up. And obviously, you already did pop up a little bit, winning the Tampa Bay Club Series. It wasn't the sweetest one, and he came out with that victory. I right, same thing with Mo, man. He won the Saints, so they're both a little bit away to the goal. And 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 for me, it. I think I think Mo, Mo in the trips tight end. Mo, I I would put Mo on a journey and joke level defensively. I I mean those three. If you told me the three best defensive players in, in this thing, without a doubt, I mean are Mo, Journey, and Joke. I I, I mean, so defensively, I think Mo is an elite man player. If he can put the offense together, man, and not make any mistakes, I think he wins this game. I really do. Clef, for me, I think he's good on offense, but it's nothing extra, man. It's just it's just Clef really just, I don't know if he can make that extra adjustment on the fly. You know, I feel like he's, I don't know, I feel like he's kind of, I don't want to say basic, but I kind of feel like he's he's such a cookie-cutter player that I feel like, and Mo, Mo is the exact opposite. Mo will do something wild make an adjustment, and he will be uh, like kind of one step ahead if he's prepared like he should be, man. I really think Mo wants to get back. I really think last year not making any live events, not making any money off of man really got to him. And I, I think all the skimbo talk, all the skimbo problem, all this stuff, all that talk was Mo. I mean, three years ago, we were talking about Mo. We, we had a video of Mo in, in Lima, Ohio, where people don't make it out. Now, all of a sudden, one year, he don't make any money. I feel like that's really got to him, and I feel like he's going to go ahead and get this victory in the first round. And honestly, I feel like if he gets this victory, it's going to be, it's going to be tough to knock Mo out of the rest of the tournament. Especially, I think this is going to be his. Whether he plays Ghost or Journey next, it's still that game against Clef is going to be his toughest. I'm picking Mo. Serious Mo is definitely a, definitely, shoot, one of my favorites to win this tournament. Really, next Manu, who was another player that really, I mean, one of the best players to not win. Or not really make a live event other than when this uh, Panthers Club Series. Um, and he plays who does he plays this guy King, who's who's underrated. King has not been to live events. Who definitely I heard he beat Safa, even though he got his field goal blocked a bunch of times. And uh, but he's definitely new. This was his first big game, really. And Manu, this is this has been the um, the peak for Manu as far as live events is winning the Carolina Club Series. Last year, I think he lost to Safa in a good game. But Manu is definitely, along with Crush, one of the best players to not really make a live event or make a lot of money off of Madden. So I, I, I like him over this guy, King. I don't know much about the underrated King. I really don't. But I know Manu is a talented man player, and I'm going to pick him to win this game right here to move on to face Mo in the round of 16. Uh, who else we got here? All right, so those two I like. I like in that matchup. One of those two. All right, 
next the bottom the bottom quarter. This is some decent games, man. Dragon strafing for me is that's definitely a, a tough one. One of the better games. We got Drag, who's pretty much the oldest person left. Sometimes I really root for the older people. But at the same time, Ryan is old too. So both of these guys are pretty old. Um, Drag is a lot more predictable than Ryan is. I think Drag is a lot more schematic player. Uh, and like I said, we haven't seen Drag play anything. Strafen actually played Minnesota, which I want to say was a month and a half ago. So we know Strafen's going to be in trips tight end. Defensively, he's going to be in some 3-4 or something that people really don't run that much. But to my day, Strafen's pretty much always been a cover three player. Drag Drag was running that trip, so that tray open early in the year in my head, like the first week. He was really good with it. He he came up with a lot of concepts that the people really still run today. And I mean, you, you go from a systematic guy in drag to just a all over the place guy in, in Ryan. Uh man. I'm gonna pick Ryan in this matchup. Ryan's been in a lot of events, man, and he's Yet to really make a super run. And this one might be it. I'm going to pick him in this matchup. It's For me, that's that's one of the toughest games of the first round. But I'm going to pick Ryan in that matchup right off the bat. To beat Drag in a tight one. Like I said, a systematic guy that's really just like, you know, <laughs> knows what to run against what. And, and then the strafing is just all over the place. And then we got to go on to Keynes versus McKinley. McKinley knocked out my guy Reggie. And uh, McKinley has been one, another player that's been good, been a tough out all, all these years. And uh, he's definitely different than anybody else. He really is. And Keynes is the exact opposite. Keynes is a community specialist. And uh, the exact opposite, McKinley, who's just, he's on his own thing. He's running his own stuff. But a lot of times what I go back to, man, the community is the community for a reason. It's the best offense, and uh, Keynes honestly has some of the best pocket presence in the world. If he's playing good on offense, man, he can definitely make a run. He's in the trips tight end that a lot of people are in. I want to say, shoot, half of this, more than half of this is in trips tight end. So I got Keynes beating McKinley, man, because if he's playing well, Keynes, Keynes can make a run for sure. He's one of the other players. He's made some live events, but Keynes definitely is due for a little bit of a run. Last year he could have made a run in the clubs, but he uh, Derrick Henry trucked him over. He went two and one in the man bowl. I lost and didn't make it out of groups. Kane's got swerved to make a live event. He's definitely one of these players that's due to make a run. Not necessarily make a live event, but make a run. I feel like Strafen's in that same group. Like you've been at a lot of live events. It's time to make a run, man. So I got Kane's winning that game. Next, Nene versus um. T. Davis, this is I, this is another underrated matchup, man. We just saw Nene play. Um, I want to say we just saw him play. What? Shoot. Oh, let me see what we're doing. Here. We just saw Nene play two days ago against Little Man, man. He's and he's another one like McKinley, man. He's doing his own thing. Nickel double a gap. He had the trips under center, and I feel like at him having to play on stream was a huge disadvantage for him. I really do, especially with a player with a new scheme like that. I think playing playing on stream was a huge disadvantage because now T. Davis knows what where, where the post route's coming from, what his reads are, what his defense is against Bunch because little man is his guy. They're in the same camp, so he's going to see exactly what defense he ran against Bunch, what he does on offense. It's really going to be him being on stream is, is such a big deal in this matchup that I'm going to take T. Davis I, I think it I think it really hurt. It's really gonna hurt um Nene being on stream and T Davis wanna win that. Oh man. So uh where are we at? Alright. Last game, Kid versus Suspect. Suspect obviously is um Kane's brother. I, I mean I didn't think Kid looked that great in the Seattle Club series. Obviously versus Killer Mike, he just looked good. But um I didn't think he looked that great. Obviously, he could have lost to Decroft fairly easily. So, I didn't think he looked that great. Suspect is, uh, he's a good man player. I still think Kiv is elite. You know what I'm saying? So, ah, uh, man. I'm going to pick Kiv. Like I said, uh, it's a few people I think are elite man players, and Kiv is one of them. So, I'm going to pick Kiv to beat Suspect. Just just because Kiv's experience, and I, like I said, I think he's elite. I think he's going to go ahead and take care of Suspect in that round. 
But I said, Suspect is another one that's really good. And I can definitely get it done if he gets a couple breaks. But like I said, Kid did not look that great against uh, D. Croft. He could have easily lost that game and not been in the position he's in right now. But he did win, and we'll see if he learns from that and definitely uh, can continue to uh, make a run. So I'm definitely picking Kid there. Uh, Kid definitely got lucky versus D. Croft. Like, what? Or D. Croft laid down, too. He didn't look that great. But anyway... That's my final 16. We got J. Wall, Blocky, Wesley, Spoto, Allen, Pavan, Joe Crush, Journey Ghost, Mo, Manu, Strafe and Canes, T. Davis, and Kiv. Um, so here we go. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to do that. Merge that down. All right. So let's go Final Four. Let's start on the NFC side, man. These matchups are very good. I mean, I like Journey and Ghost. This is this is the best matchup of the first round, Journey and Ghost. You got a defensive player against a cookie cutter offensive player in Ghost. Ghost is, oh, you're running that on defense? Okay, I have to run this play. Oh, you're running that on offense? I have to run this defense. That's Ghost. Ghost is a blueprint. He is a robot. And when he's playing offense well, when he's predicting your defense and calling the right plays, I mean, he's as good as it is offensively, really. Drenny is the opposite. He has no blueprint. He has no, I mean, he has a plan, but he doesn't have an exact, the ghost has like five plays. He runs the exact same setups, flips it. There's no real freestyle with the ghost. If you throw some shit at ghost that he never saw, he's going to be bagged. But if he saw it, he's going to play very well against it. Drenny will adapt as well as anybody. Uh, shoo, golly. Uh, shoot, chat. I'm picking Journey. At the end of the day, I'm picking the defensive player. That's how I played both of these guys in the last couple weeks. Definitely, I'm going to pick Journey to go ahead and move. Picking the defensive player over the offensive player. Picking the Cowboy, that's really rough for me. But boom, I'm going to pick Journey. Chat, let me know who you guys like. Ghost or Journey, that is the best matchup but this final 16 for sure. Next round, we got... Mo versus Manu. I think this is Mo. Manu, like I said, Manu makes runs and then he randomly, he's going to lay down in the game. I think that happens early. I think Mo gets him. Mo moves on. Crazy final eight matchup right there between Mo and er, and Drenny. Uh, what are we doing here? What's going on? Oh my God. What is this? All right. We're good. All right. All right, so down the bottom, Canes and Strafen. If if Strafen does be dragged, which I think he will, he's going to be prepared for trips tight end. I really just, at the end of the day, I think Canes is a better player than Strafen a little bit. Ah, I'm not sure. This is tough. I'm going to pick Canes to go ahead and win this game. I think it's, it's his time for him to make a little bit of a run here at, the, uh, at a live event. Probably pretty much the easiest first two games to get to the final eight. Strafen's a good player. McKinley's a good player, but they're not. He's not beating any elites, and he's gotten to the final eight. Whereas Journey beat Ghost, Mo beat Clef. Definitely, these two guys have had a harder road than Kane's has. Down here, T. Davis versus Kiv. I definitely got to go ahead and give this advantage to Kiv right here. Like I said, I told you guys a million times, man. I think there's elite man players, and Kiv is one of them. So I think he's going to move on here in this spot. Whoa. I don't want to move that one. I'll tell you, chat, this gets hard sometimes. Pause. What are we doing here? All right, let me just delete this. Dun, 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 dun. What do you do? You think there's any chance T. Davis is going to beat Kiv in this round of 16 chat? There we go. So we're going to pick Kiv to move on. Bang. That's my final four in the NFC. Drenny, Mo, Keynes, and Kiv. Definitely going to be some tough matchups in the final four. And now let's go over here and slide over here to the AFC. Boom. Let's move that down. Jack, you bet with the same people all the time. 
He can't be asked. Over here, J Wall Blocky, the young cat versus the little bit older cat. Bunch versus Trips tight end. Blocky did not play on stream at all. Against J Wall. <sighs> I'm gonna go with the blocky guy. I like the blocky guy. I'm gonna call Blocky a veteran. Popping up on the young cat J Wall. Moving on to the final eight. That's my pick right there. The next game we got Wesley versus Spoto. I uh, I think highly of both of these two young characters. I definitely think uh I think Wesley's gonna take this though. I think Wesley's a, a notch above Spoto in the uh Madden rankings. I think he's a more prepared player. I think he's a more well rounded player than Spoto. And I think he's he can go ahead and take this win and move on to play Blocky in the final eight. Boom. That's what I think. The next the next two we got Pavan versus Allen. This is another great matchup, an underrated matchup. With two guys a lot of community really hasn't seen. When I say community, I mean like, you know, the mainstream type of guys. They haven't really been, like I said, last year, Pavan, I believe he lost a problem. But um, he definitely ha is one of the players that hasn't got a lot of attention, along with Allen, because Allen's so young. So they're definitely going to have a chance to show out, and I, I think Allen's going to take this game. I think he's just a tad, tad bit better than Pavan. And I think he's going to move on. He's definitely he's definitely had two tough matchups between Jeff and Allen or Jeff and Pavon. So he's a tough way to go, man. Whereas Blocky, Blocky and Wesley kind of had a little bit of a f easier first round, man. Then the last game we talked about this earlier, man. Joke versus Crush. I think if Joke wins the first round, he's going to be Crush, man. He plays against Ghosts all the time. He plays against, you know, who all his guys run bunch pretty much. So I definitely think Joke's going to be prepared and he's going to get an advantage on Crush. I think Joke wins that game. Boom. That's my final eight. Chat, what do you guys think? YouTube, what do you guys think? Let me know if I'm wrong, if I'm if it's bad, if it's good, where you disagree. I'm not listening to anything Jag says because it's definitely wrong. But that's my final eight. Blocky Wesley, Alan Joke, Journey Mo, Kane's Kiv. Boom. Oh. You guys like Clef? Okay, well, let's go to the final four. I'll start in the AFC this time. Wesley versus Blocky. A lot of bunch, a lot of bunch, a lot of bunch. And uh, I like Wesley in this game. I think Wesley's pretty good. We go back to the company you keep and the people you play with, man. Wesley plays with some good players. And uh, he's really prepared to make a run. He hasn't played that much. But I like him to go ahead and move on there to make the final four. Down below, Allen versus Joke, man. I think Allen, the young cat, is really high powered. I think he's gonna he's gonna get Grandpa Joke. I think that's definitely gonna be the uh, boom, the one that uh, Allen versus Wesley in the finals there of the AFC. I think Allen's gonna beat Joke. I think Allen's just that much better offensively than Joke is. I think Joke's a great defensive player. But when it comes to the high power matches, I think his offense is always going to be holding back a little bit. And I got to pick Wesley and Allen. I think Allen makes this run. Definitely a tough run when you beat Jeff, Pavon, and Joke. Definitely looking stronger than Wesley's uh, Nick, Spoto, and, and Blocky. So that's what I got in the AFC. Let me know if you guys agree, disagree, whatever it may be. NFC. I'm going ahead. I got to... Journey vs. Moe is a tough game. Mm. I think... Shoot. Hmm. Let me see. This is tough to guess. I think... down. Let me start down here. I think Kiv... Kiv is going to beat Kane's. I think Kane's going to be in his head. He's going to be thinking about the game... Keynes is good, but weak minded. He gonna get like he gonna overthink himself. If he plays Kiv on the other screen, he's gonna he's not gonna play the same. If he were playing anybody else, he would play this top game. I think Kane's biggest weakness is that sometimes he he lose before he start. And if he plays Kiv, his friend, somebody who he knows is really good, he's gonna he's not gonna play the same. He's gonna play down. He's gonna play down, not down the Kiv, but he's just gonna play a bad game. I think Kiv wins that game for sure. So Kiv goes to the final four. The Moe vs. Journey game, man. Oh, man. 
I think this is how I think about it, man. I feel like if if Moby's Clef and Mandel was definitely two tough players, I think he's going to have all the momentum in the world. But then I got Journey beating Ghost. Shoot. Can Journey do enough on offense? That's... I think I got to go with these two guys. Let me just double this up again. Um... I definitely have, um, I think I like Mo, man. I don't know if Journey's going to do enough offensively. I think Mo is more high-powered than Journey. I think they're, I think they're two of the best defensive players in the game, but I think Mo's a little bit more high-powered than Journey is just because of what he runs and everything. That's what I think, man. Sheesh. So that's my final four I got right now, chat. Let me know. Am I wrong? Am I tripping? Where am I wrong? Let me know, man. Mo, Kiv, Allen, Wesley. These three kids, I mean, look, I, I I can't have any of these guys win. I kind of almost want Allen if this final four breaks down. Yeah, I, I like Mo right there, man. And Mo definitely be blind sometimes for sure. So, I mean, I think I pretty I, I picked a real safe bracket. There's nothing crazy going on out here. Wesley versus Allen. Wesley supposedly is three and over it's him in games of best of three for five hundred or something. But I'm picking the Allen man, man. I I I really am. These kids are 15. They don't leave the console. But then Wesley doesn't leave the console either. Boom. That's my pick right there. Mo versus Kiv. Ah, oh, man. I don't think Mo. I feel like every time Mo has to play Kiv, he loses. I, yeah, I think every time Kiv has to play Mo, he, Mo loses. I, I'm picking the Kiver. This is my pick. Boom. That's my finals right there. I'm, am I lying, chat? Am I wrong? That's my finals. Do you guys like my final pick, man? This is my my two my two guys. I think will make it through. Kiva had to go through suspect T Davis. Can't, I feel like he got the easiest little path. To go through as far as compared to these other guys, I think like Mo would have the toughest the toughest path really between Clef, Mano, and Journey. That'd be the unreal path right there. Kiv obviously has has three players. I mean, two players that's never really been in a live event. Then Kane's who, who's been at a bunch but hasn't really made a run. So Kiv Kiv, I mean his 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 road is a lot easier than Mo's or Journey's would be if he wins. And I think I think one thing Mo. Kiv would have an advantage playing Mo. I feel like Kiv beats Mo every matchup. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm lying, but I just feel that way. Then this side, Allen has a, a sneaky little three between Jeff, Pavon, and Joke. Those are three good players. Obviously, Joke is one of the best. Get through that. That's tough. Wesley has a kind of sweet road, really. Nick, I Spoto's tough and Blocky's tough, but, man. So these are my two I have winning. I'm going to have to go with the Kiver taking it home, man. I think, I don't know, but maybe that big stage, Kiv is kind of used to it. Bang. I, I I said a lot of good things about Clef. He just plays Mo. I have no, Merle. Listen, I, I have nothing bad to say about Clef. I think Clef is one of the 10 best players in his bracket. He just got a tough first round matchup. It's the best first round matchup there is. Really. That's what I like, chat. Although, like I said, I didn't think Kiv looked great against, uh, against D-Croft. But he definitely, uh, I don't think Clef owns Mo. I, I, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, for, see, well, that's how it is, man. It's, it's, it's tough to, uh, but that's just who I like. Honestly, I didn't think I had Kiv winning the whole thing. I really didn't. As tough as the NFC is, Kiv's, Kiv's road is, is sweet compared to the other ones. Like, I honestly, as much as we say the NFC, that top of the NFC is crazy. 
The top of the NFC is unreal. The bottom of the NFC, eh. The AFC, eh. That's right. D. Croft did lay down. Kid didn't look that good. I like Kiv, man. And I really didn't think, like I said, when I first look at the bracket, I didn't, I wouldn't say I picked Kiv, but when I break down the bracket, see how the things go, I think, I think he's going to make a run. And the Allen Kiv game is going to be crazy. And I, I honestly, I, it could go either way, but I'm going to go ahead with a little bit of experience. This is what I got. Like I said, if you guys think I'm wrong, man, if you guys think I'm wrong, all you got to do is fill out a bracket. It's not hard. You go here. Bang. This is it. Just go down here. Where's my media? There's journey. Make sure we're flooding this in the chat. Let me see if you guys, if you guys got the right screen. If you're flooding this in the chat when it's time for journey to play. Um, all you got to do is fill out this bracket right here. You can fill out your own bracket. Croft, definitely not bad. Fill out your own bracket. Like I said, we're giving away $200 cash, $100 of Players Lounge, Team of the Year, Todd Gurley. If you PS4, I'll buy you something else. I'll buy you like $50 points to get some points on PS4. Like I said, anybody in the Final Four, man, they're going to get $50 to so they need a gaming store. Like I said, I'm going to give one point for every win in the first round. Two points for every win you get from there on out, and ten points if you get the right winner. Period. So pretty much you can get ah uh, maybe five points for right winner. Chat. What do you think is fair? I didn't want to make one point for every game, but I wanted like the, the deeper get pause, the games further on in the tournament to count a little bit more than the first round. So I'll figure out the perfect scoring to figure out where this is. Got 116 entries already, man. Like I said, Journey was probably the main favorite. Journey and Kiv were probably the two of the favorites. Allen actually had a lot of votes over here. I mean, over here, this top left one, they had a bunch of people coming out of this one. An extra point. So, so one point for this round, two for that round, three for that round, four, and five for the winner if you get the winner right. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Figgy, I mean, like I said, he, he won the Eagles. I hope he makes a run. He's got a tough first-round matchup. Say why he beat him last year? Like he beat him last year fairly easily. Why is that? I can't talk to Jag. Chat YouTube man, if you guys know Jag, don't get in any argument. He gonna pick the same people no matter what. Figgy, like it's crazy. Yeah, but for real, make sure you guys fill this out. If you didn't, who cares, man? You win something, you don't. It's fun to fill out. It's gonna be fun to follow along. See if your bracket gets busted. That's pretty much uh, pretty much what I want to do. Give you guys something to watch. Why y'all watching these tournaments, man? I hope they really run well. I hope everything goes smooth. Let's pray for no desyncs. The success of this tournament is going to be a big deal for how much money we can all make down the line. So it's going to be important that you guys check it out, man. I think it's all week. It starts January 30th. It's going to run into February 2nd. And there's definitely going to be some great games. I went through all these games. I picked who, who I think I got winning. So make sure you guys fill out the same things, man. It's definitely an opportunity for you to win a little something. Definitely going to go through, man. Yep, nobody nobody really wants the desyncs, but it could happen, man. It definitely could happen. But like I said, man, we went through the Jess Club series. I appreciate my guy, AKG, for coming through, checking out, uh, talking about that because I know it's tough to talk about a game after a loss. I, and like I said, I went through my bracket, gave you who I think I'm winning. I got Kiv beating Allen in the finals. Final four of Mo, Kiv, Wesley, and Allen. That's going to be a tough final four, man. Bunch of great games. I don't have all the answers, man. Fill out your bracket. Get it in. All you have to do is reply with your bracket underneath that tweet to be eligible. I will stop all these probably around, you know, right before the game kick off tomorrow. Uh, like I said, if I get, if I get, you know, 50, 100 likes, I will commentate over these games if that's something you guys want to. Chat, I'm asking you guys right now. The biggest thing for me personally is that I hate that we don't have a chat room, man. And I'd love to commentate the games with you guys and give you all a chat room to talk with just us that really pay attention to man all year round. And we aren't worried about the drafts or anything like that. So if that's something y'all interested in, please hit the like button and comment below. I will get that done. But this has been the Needed Podcast episode 15. I appreciate all you guys for coming through. And please get your brackets in. The deadline is tomorrow. And make sure you guys check out the EA Twitch, man. You guys can check out all these games live and follow your bracket that you fill out.